Welcome everyone, I am Talk Custom, and today I'm gonna to show you the basics of using the Brother PE770. Uh, the current model is the PE800, and there will probably be a even newer model soon, but I just wanna show you the basics of how to get this thing set up and how to use it. All right, now before we get started, I did do a very basic entry-level embroidery tutorial using the Brother SE400, or the Brother SE600 is what's out now. Um, so I'm gonna show you what's different between that machine and what's different between this machine right here. All right, so first off, this is the Brother PE770. The current model is the PE800, and there will soon be an even newer model. Uh, this one does have a dust cover, which is nice for keeping everything clean on the inside. Uh, you can take the embroidery harness off uh, if you need to save space or move your machine, but most of the time, I just leave it plugged in like that. And one thing that is quite different about this machine is, uh, unlike most sewing machines, this one does not have a foot pedal. All you need to do is take your power supply and plug it in. Uh, you do not need to control this with your foot, which is kind of nice. Uh, and once you turn it on, it's going to do its little startup test. Uh, once it boots up and then you kind of hit the screen, uh, it will ask you to hit OK. It'll do its little start test and calibrate the embroidery hoop harness. And then we are ready to get started. So this machine comes with a 5x7 inch hoop, which is quite a bit larger than the 4x4 inch hoop that comes with the SE400, uh, which is a pretty significant difference. And it also stitches a lot faster, and it is a lot more reliable of an embroidery machine than the other machine. Uh, so starting off with the touchscreen on this, uh, the newer machine has a larger color touchscreen, but this one essentially works the same. So these first two options are a bunch of pre-programmed uh, images that you can choose from. And if you have the actual package, it'll show you what it looks like. Uh, this will let you do any lettering, uh, large, medium, or small, in a few different types of fonts. So you can do uh, any kind of lettering that you want to embroider. Uh, this one here will let you select a frame if you want to frame something that you've got embroidered. This will let you read from a memory card, which comes with the software. Uh, this will let you upload anything you've saved to your machine, and this will let you read any image or file off a USB card. Uh, and then this last button here just literally moves the embroidery carriage out of the way so that you can get ready for your project. All right, now we're gonna talk about some different types of thread. So it's very important that for your bobbin thread, you use embroidery machine bobbin thread. And they usually come, if you buy Guterman brand stuff, It'll come on a green spool like this, usually in just black and white. If I'm doing a light color, like gold, I would use a white uh, bobbin thread, or depends on the different color fabric I'm using. But for the most part, I pair light colors with white and dark colors with uh, black embroidery bobbin thread. So I've done a ton of tutorials on how to wind a bobbin. It's exactly the same on this machine that it is with every other machine that I've ever done a tutorial on how to widen a bobbin. So if you haven't seen that, please watch one of those other videos. Otherwise, uh, I've already pre-wound a bobbin and just put it in my case right here. Now, since we're using a black embroidery bobbin thread, I'm gonna use kind of a deep red uh, to pair with that. And it's very important that you buy specific machine embroidery thread when you're doing any embroidery. Uh, it goes on a little bit thinner, it's a lot smoother, and it's got a really nice shine to it, which makes your embroidery designs look really good. So I'm just going to thread this the same way that we thread every other type of machine. And now our machine is ready, and we have to figure out what fabric we're going to use and what design we want to put on it. All right, now before we get started, I've got a pretty lightweight woven fabric here for making shirts and stuff like that. So before we get started, I'm going to iron this real quick and smooth everything out. All right, so we've got our fabric ironed and say we're gonna make some patches. I'm gonna take the top part of this hoop, uh, which is five by seven inches, and I'm gonna lay it on a section of my fabric, just kind of like that. And then all I'm gonna do is just kind of Cut around it, maybe about an inch or so from the edges so that I can easily get this in the hoop. And I should be left with something that looks kind of like that. All right, so we're gonna talk about embroidery stabilizers. So if you're doing a knit fabric, which is something stretchy and very lightweight, you'd wanna use 
uh, kind of a thicker cutaway uh, embroidery stabilizer, which is what this is. Uh, but since we're using a little bit more of a woven and medium weight fabric, I'm going to be using a lighter weight tear away stabilizer, uh, which is a little bit easier to deal with. So uh, definitely look up what fabrics work best with which stabilizers, but I'm going to be using a tear away uh, stabilizer to go with this woven fabric here. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to move our fabric out of the way and then I'm going to roll this out figure out how much I need according to my hoop and then I'm just going to cut like that. So now I know exactly how much uh, stabilizer I need. And because this kind of wants to roll up, I always take this to my ironing board and I'm just going to press this flat before we get started. All right, so a friend of mine taught me a trick where you use basting spray to kind of attach your stabilizer to your fabric, which makes it a lot easier to get in the hoop. Uh, so that's a trick I do all the time, and I highly recommend getting a can of aerosol basting spray. Now, I'm just going to very lightly get a little bit of basting spray on there, and then I'm going to put on our stabilizer and just kind of smooth it out with my hands like that. Uh, it's not a permanent bond, but it will stick long enough for us to get this in the hoop so that we can get started with our embroidery. All right, so we're just going to flip this over, and I'm going to make sure it looks nice and smooth. And then we're going to take the bottom part of our hoop, and I'm going to kind of loosen the bolt at the bottom so that uh, the top is going to fit in there nicely. Um, and then we're going to lay this uh, flat on the table here. I'm going to take my fabric and stabilizer, and we're going to put the top part of the hoop on. And there's a little arrow right there that you want pointing up. So now I'm going to lay that flat on the right side of our fabric and make sure that I'm going to be able to grab both the fabric and the stabilizer at the same time. And I'm going to very carefully uh, grab both of these together. And then we are just going to scoot this over and kind of seat the top part of the hoop into the bottom part of the hoop and make sure that it sits in there very nicely. Now this looks pretty smooth as it is right now. Uh, if you need to, you can hold the top of the hoop down and kind of tug on the fabric if you see any puckering or any ripples in your fabric, but this looks pretty good. Uh, you do not want to over tighten your fabric because if you do that, uh, you're going to get some other puckering and ripples in your fabric. So just make sure that it looks nice and flat. Uh, then I'm going to take the screw on the bottom of the hoop and tighten it as hard as I can tighten it with my fingers. You don't have to use like a wrench, uh, but you just want this really, really tight. Now that it's tight, I can feel that this feels kind of like a loose drum is the kind of the, the feeling you're going for. You don't want it super tight, but you want it uh, nice and sturdy like that. So this is hooped and we are now ready to start with an embroidery design. All right, so once you've got your fabric hooped, uh, I'm just going to slide this underneath our presser foot and there's a couple little uh, keys that'll match up with your hoop and it will click into place like that. Uh, once you have that set up, uh, I'm going to use a design I made on the computer that I've just got on a USB stick. So I'm going to put that in the machine and hit the USB button. I'm going to load up all the designs I have on here. And I'm going to load up one that I've got um, of six different colored top custom patches that I can make all on one hoop. So this is going to be able to make six patches all at once. Uh, this one, as I look at my colors, it tells me I need seven colors. So I can do one different color for each patch and then it's going to end with uh, a black border around all of the patches when it's done. Now once I've got that ready I can look at my layout and it's going to take up the whole hoop like it shows right here if you can see that it's got all my little logos there. All right <clears throat> so now we're ready to start our embroidery. So we've got the bobbin thread in place, I've got my top embroidery thread in place, my design is loaded up, I've got everything set the way I need. All I need to do now is lower the presser foot. This light here is going to turn green and when that turns green I can hit this button and it's going to start doing the embroidery immediately. Um, so now <clears throat> 
We just have to wait for this to finish the first color, and then when it finishes, it's going to tell us to switch to the next color. So I'm just going to let the machine run, and we will come back when it's time to switch. All right, so once it's done with the first color, it's going to stop. And if I look at my little screen over here, and I hit back, and I hit color check, it's going to tell me what my next color is. So it wants me to do gold now. And if I go through these, it'll tell me which color is going to be after that. So I can kind of plan ahead. So now it wants me to do gold, so I'm going to take... Actually, I'm going to do orange instead, and then the next one I'll do gold. So I'm going to do orange for this one, and then we'll move on to the next color. So your machine will automatically cut the thread for you, so you don't have to cut it after uh, it's done with a color. And now I'm just going to load in my uh, orange thread, and then we're going to do the same thing we just did. And once the light turns green, I can hit the button. And sometimes I like to trim the thread after a few stitches, just so it doesn't get all bunched up in there. Okay, so now I can take out my orange thread here, and I'm going to load in gold the same way, and we're just going to do this all the way until all six colors are done. Okay, I'm kind of glad this happened. Once in a while, your top thread might snap or come out of the needle, and uh, I want to show you how to fix this. So anyway, I've got a message here that says check and rethread the upper thread, and I can hit close, which is fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the needle here, and then I'm going to uh, unthread. Oh, so what happened was it wrapped around my thread stopper here, and it got stuck, uh, which happens once in a while. Something else that can cause this to happen a lot is if you're using a dull needle, so it's always a good idea to make sure you've got a nice, sharp uh, machine embroidery needle in your machine. But for right now, I'm just going to rethread this, and there's a really cool trick I get to show you guys that I did not show in my last video. Now, a lot of times when your machine does any missed stitches or the thread breaks, um, there's a really cool trick you can do where I'm going to zoom in on my camera here. And I'm going to go to this thing, and there's a button right here that says, it shows a needle with a plus minus, so I'm going to hit that. And then uh, where the needle is, I'm going to hit minus. Now, every time I hit this button, it's going to go back one stitch. And I can kind of zoom out, and you can see the hoop move as I do this. So uh, I want to go back until I can see where the stitches stopped there. It might be kind of hard to see on camera. So that is where my stitches stopped. So now I can match up my new thread with where my stitches broke. Uh, don't hit the spool buttons because that's going to change from one color to the other. But you just want to hit the needle plus or minus, and that's going to take you forward or backward in stitches. So now, everything should be all good, and I can continue on with where I was right there. Okay, so I just got a message saying that my bobbin thread is running low, and thankfully it happened right at the end of my purple color here. So if you need to rewind a bobbin while your embroidery is not done, you just take the hoop out, make sure you cut your thread so that it doesn't pull. Uh, so as I take this out, uh, I can see that my bobbin is, in fact, empty. Um, so, uh, and again, thankfully that happened at the perfect time, so... Now again, I'm not going to do a full tutorial on how to wind a bobbin because I've done that a ton of times, um, but I'm just going to very quickly wind a new bobbin using uh, black embroidery bobbin thread, uh, the same way that I do it on every other machine. Uh, one thing that's worth mentioning with this machine, because there's no foot pedal, when I pop the clutch to the right, um, instead of using my foot foot, I just end up pressing this will turn orange when it's ready for the bobbin to be wound. So if I hold the thread down with my finger and I press this, it's going to cut the thread so I don't have to do it myself, and it's going to wind the bobbin. Uh, and then when this is full, I just hit the orange button again to make it stop. 
All right, now I got my bobbin loaded in, and because I just finished the uh, last actual color, uh, the last thing to do is black. So this is going to be the border or the outline around each of the patches that we're making. So I just have to load in my black thread, and then we're going to put the hoop back in. All right, so now I get a fresh bobbin. I'm gonna lower my foot. The button turns green. I hit that, and it is gonna do all of our black outlines all at once. Okay, so all of our patches are done, so I can lift my foot, and we're gonna take our hoop out, and then we're gonna take this over to the table and clean this up so it looks a little bit better. Now, once you're done with your embroidery, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this out of the hoop. So I'm just going to loosen here at the bottom, pop off the top, and then we've got this like that. It's very normal to have what's called jump stitches. Uh, and this is a really simple design, so this is gonna be really easy. But the only jump stitches I have are these little black threads right here. So I'm just gonna take my embroidery snips which have rounded tips so that you don't accidentally cut into your fabric. And I'm just gonna clean up any loose threads and I can kind of see between these um, patches right here. There's a few jump threads right there as well. All right, now before I do anything else, I always iron my embroideries into place and that helps to set the stitches and it's gonna smooth out the fabric. So before I even take off my stabilizer, I'm gonna go iron this. All right, something else I wanna mention is that there's no puckering or wrinkling anywhere in this fabric, which is great. That means I had the proper tension in my hoop. Uh, so if you notice there's any puckering or wrinkling in your fabric, that either means the fabric was too loose or it was too tight. Um, and it's even harder to do that with a knit fabric. So it takes a little bit of practice. So if you make a couple of mistakes, don't worry about it. Thread is cheap, fabric is cheap, don't worry too much. So now because we used a uh, tearaway fabric, I can actually just very lightly pull on this and it's just gonna tear the stabilizer in the back. And I'm just gonna do this until there is no more stabilizer left. All right, so I've got most of my stabilizer off. Uh, I don't have to get all of it because we're gonna make patches out of these, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, now there's two different types of embroidery. There's patch making, which is what we're doing here, and I'm gonna show you the next step in a second, but then there's also, if you wanna embroider something uh, specifically, like this is a bag I made, so this is my Zenogre Monster Hunter bag, and I just embroidered a design directly onto vinyl. And on the side, I've got my company logo right here. And on the other side, I've got one of another logo right here. So you can embroider directly onto panels, and then sew it into something. I also embroidered my brand name into the strap, which I thought was really cool. So um, there's a few more inside as well. So you can embroider directly onto panels and then sew it into a shirt or a bag or something like that. Or if you wanna make patches, you can do what we're about to do next. So the next thing we need is some fusible webbing with backing. And this stuff is super cheap. You can get it on a whole bolt or you can just buy a yard or two at a time. So what I'm gonna do is uh, lay this out and there is kind of a rough edge where the adhesive is and the other side is just a very smooth paper backing. Now, before I measure and cut that out, I'm just going to uh, kind of trim a little bit around the edges just so that I've got a better idea of how much uh, webbing that I need. Okay, so now I can just fit this right here on my webbing like that. And then I'm just gonna cut straight across. And this next part is really easy. All right, so I'm at my ironing board, and what I wanna do is I wanna put the paper side of my uh, webbing against my ironing board so that the rough adhesive side is face up. And then I'm gonna take all my patches, I'm gonna put them just like that, and then at like a high heat or a cotton heat, I'm going to just very slowly iron these together 
And I'm not really ironing so much as I'm pressing. So instead of ironing where you kind of smooth it out, I'm just pressing very firmly to make sure that I'm heat setting this to our webbing. So this is nice and hot now and the adhesive on the paper is going to melt and then it's going to fuse to the back of the fabric, which is great. And then after about maybe 30 seconds or a minute, it's going to cool and it's going to be uh, completely fused with each of these patches here. So I'm just going to wait about maybe a minute or so and then come back and we're going to cut these out. Okay, so these are nice and cool and now we can start cutting these out. So all I'm going to do is just try to cut as close as I can to the stitches on the border uh, without cutting through them because I don't want them to fray. Um, this will take a while because these designs are pretty intricate and there's a lot of uh, curves and stuff like that. Um, so I will just kind of speed through this and do my best. Now for the sake of this demo, it's worth mentioning that normally when I make patches, I use black denim all the time. Uh, denim does a really good job of making patches and also there's a couple of spots on here where I can see a little bit of the blue fabric uh, between the red and the border. Uh, the reason I used blue fabric in this demo is because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but if I was doing these for a commission or just for myself, I would almost always use black denim. All right, so once I cut out the basic shapes, then I use some precision uh, needle nose snips uh, to cut out any details. And this is the part that takes a while. It's not hard, it just takes a little bit of time. As I finish my patches, I'll just do one of them. Uh, there's a product called Fray Check, um, and there's also some other things called like liquid stitch and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go around this whole thing around the edge and what this is going to do is it's going to seal all of these threads and the fabric itself so that it will never fray and this is something that's going to keep your patch nice and strong for a long period of time so that it doesn't ever fall apart. Okay, so now I've got my green patch is all fray check all the way around, so that's going to stay nice and strong. I'll do the other ones off camera. Once you're done with all of your fray check, if you choose to do that, all you have to do is flip your patch around backwards. So this is the paper uh, from the fusible webbing, and I'm just going to very carefully peel this off. It's going to be hard to see it, but uh, there's kind of this uh, waxy, shiny... Um, texture on the back, and that's the part that's the adhesive. So if I put this onto a piece of fabric and I ironed it down, it's going to fuse to that fabric, and then when it cools, it's going to stick to it. Uh, it's not a permanent solution. So in my other video on embroidery, uh, I showed you how to do a top stitch around the edge so that it stays on your fabric forever. Um, but this is how you get it to be fusible so that you can uh, iron it onto a piece of fabric or garment until it sticks and then you can top stitch around it to keep it locked in place forever. Um, so that is some really good options for making patches and then again uh, if you just want to embroider directly onto a garment or a shirt or a panel that you're going to sew into something this is another really good example of what you can do with that. And I was really impressed that this machine we used did such a clean embroidery directly onto some marine vinyl, which I was really happy about. This was really impressive. All right, everyone, so that is it. Uh, that is the basics of how to use this Brother PE770 or PE800, depending on which one you got. Um, I have been using this machine for about three or four years. I absolutely love it. It does an excellent job at embroidery. I know it's... A dedicated embroidery machine so you can't sew with it so make sure you've got a good sewing machine to pair along with this 
But the fact that it does a five by seven inch embroidery area for a really affordable price is a big deal. Beyond that, I do make all my own custom embroidery designs and I use software called PE Design 10. The current version is PE Design 11, but I do have a video on how to use that software if you're interested. And that's how I did these logos and a lot of the other projects that I do. If you have any questions about this machine or anything else at all, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I really hope this video was helpful and we will see you in the next tutorial.